Hi, and welcome to Adding the Back End of Your Application. What we'll cover in this section, interaction between Cognito, API Gateway, and Lambda, building the front end, creating and deploying your first Lambda, we'll discuss Maven and how builds work in the AWS environment, and we'll discuss the projects, we'll discuss creating an API to call the Lambda, and we'll show you how to view your Lambda logs. Hi, and welcome to Building the Front End. What we'll cover in this video, discuss Cognito, IAM roles and policies, show new bucket with cores and bucket policy, examine and deploy the new source code, run your new app and upload receipts, and then view receipts. IAM policies, and IAM is the Identity and Access Management service within AWS. It is made up of users, roles, and policies primarily. A role is made up of multiple IAM policies. This allows you to define a policy, for example, to read some files off of S3, and then a different policy to write files into that same bucket in S3. So some roles, if you combine those two, will have read and write access, where another role you might just grant read access, and a third role you might just grant write access. It allows you to keep your policy code separate from your actual users you can actually assign one or more roles to users as well. The policy itself includes statements that specify the actions and the resources. Actions are identified as a service and the functions you would specify. For example, S3, in this example policy, we allow S3 colon star, which means all operations on an S3 resource. Then you specify the resource, by using an ARN, which is an Amazon resource name. In this case, the S3 ARN is ARN colon AWS colon S3 colon colon colon, and there's some things you can put in there, but for now we'll just leave them empty. And then the bucket name, AWS Packed Receipt Files slash star. What this policy does is allow whoever has access to this policy access to the AWS Packed Receipt Files bucket and really only the files within it. Cognito has two pieces. One is the user pools and one is federated identities. User pools is an identity provider. It actually manages the user's identity and password. It also defines attributes and constraints like password requirements. Cognito federated identities is the piece that allows you to create identities in multiple identity providers, one of which is Cognito user pools. Cognito Federated Identities will also allow you to create identity providers with Facebook, Twitter, Amazon.com, etc. And you can actually define your own. So for our receipt application, as we'll see in a minute, there's a piece of the code that specifies that we're going to use Cognito Identity Credentials, and it specifies the Identity Pool ID. When a request is made from our app, that unauthenticated request will go to the Federated Identity Provider and then because the request is unauthenticated, meaning the user hasn't signed in with a username and password yet, the unauthenticated role and the policies associated with that role are provided to the caller, i.e. your receipt app. Once we get into later sections, we'll see how the federated identities service will call uh, Cognito user pools and provide access through authenticated roles and policies as well. Going back to Eclipse, we, I've already loaded the two source files we'll be looking at. First is the index.html, and you can see how pretty simple this is. It includes the js app.js file, and basically it's got a function call right in the beginning called list folders. And then this helper function just reformats the HTML. Down here in the body, you'll see this one div identified by the app ID, and that's where all the generated HTML from the JavaScript gets placed. Looking at the JavaScript, I've got the bucket name that we'll be putting the receipts into, the same bucket that was referenced in the policy. Now the region, this is the identity pool ID. And then basically, we have to configure AWS JavaScript SDK. So we'll give it the region, and we'll say what the credentials we're going to use are from the Cognito identity credentials and given by the pool. And since we're not authenticating, we haven't logged in using Cognito, it's going to use that unauthenticated role to grant permissions. Normally, I would never grant write permissions to an unauthenticated role, but just for this demo, I'm allowing it. So then we'll create a new AWS S3. 
again, referring back to the SDKs, this is the portion of the SDK that manages and deals with S3 specifically. Because we've included in the index.html the full SDK, we can reference any of the services that are provided by AWS. They do actually have the ability to create your own custom SDK with only the services that you're using in your application. Here's that list folders JavaScript function, and basically it uses the S3 object to call a list object. That's kind of like doing a, a dir or an ls in a directory and finding all the files in there. And what it does is return this HTML when it makes the call. And you can see here in JavaScript, we do the list objects. There's always a set of parameters, sometimes more than one, and then a function that is the callback. This can be defined in line or as a separate function. And basically, if you've got the error set, then your call failed. Otherwise, your data contains the return data from the function call. So here we walk down through that list, and based on what came back, we generate HTML. And again, all this source will be included for your reference and use. We've also got the create folder. So this application will allow you to upload receipts into different folders. And of course, then you have to be able to create the folder. So you may create folders by month, for example, and that's what I'll be demoing. Then you can view a folder, view all the receipts in a folder, add a receipt, and this is where it gets a little more interesting. We'll say files is the document ID receipt upload. So that's the file browser. If length is zero, you didn't choose any file, so please choose a file to upload first. Otherwise, we're going to get the first file that you chose, get its receipt key where I'm encoding that, and then we're going to do an S3 upload. The key is basically the file name. And since we've set S3 to the parameter has the bucket in it already from the beginning, it will default use that same bucket until we tell it otherwise. The body of the upload is the file itself. And then we allow this access control list for a public read. And then again, here's the callback function that if error is set, there was an error uploading the receipt. Otherwise, we'll alert that it was successfully uploaded. And then we'll call view folder. So once you upload a, a receipt, we'll want to view the folder that receipt was uploaded to. And then you can go in and delete a receipt, delete a folder, etc. Let's go upload this now and, and run it. So using the AWS Explorer, I've created a bucket for AWS Packed Videos 3. So I'll go open that as we have before. And just for ease of use, I'm going to drag it down to the bottom area here. So now basically I can drag like this, upload the files. So I'll upload the two files. And now the other thing I'm going to show you is the actual bucket for the receipts. I've already gone ahead and set up the bucket AWS Packed Receipt Files. There's no files in here. I'll go look at the properties. It's not static website hosting. Under the permissions I've set up, I've left this as default, and I've set up a bucket policy. What this does is allow that role that we set up, the unauthenticated role, access to do anything on this bucket. So this is how we control who can do what and what set of files or what bucket. Then I've also set up the course configuration, the cross-origin resource sharing. So this allows us to be on one website and access a S3 bucket on another, since the S3 bucket is on AmazonAWS.com. Now we'll go ahead and browse the new app. You can see here, since we haven't created anything before, we've got no folders. So we'll create a new folder, and I'll name it SEP2017. You can see our app tells us it created the folder successfully. And now we've got our folder. So we're in the folder, and I can choose to upload some receipts now. So I'm going to click the Choose File button, and I'm just going to pick one of these receipts I've downloaded from the internet, and say Add Receipt. Our app again tells us it was successful, and now we can see a thumbnail of the receipt. Add another one, and you can see how this is going to work, where we can continue to add receipts. We can go back to the folders and see our September 2017 folder, and the X button to delete it. I'll click into the folder. And again, we can see our receipts. What we learned in this video, we looked at new source code that views and uploads receipt images to AWS S3. Basically, we're using S3 as our file storage for our internet-based app.